we have a five dollar oh, a five dollar donation from Carlito NSP. Oh my goodness, a great crash two run followed by crash team racing. Yes, this is speed running. This right here, these two hours. Putting my money towards naming the Dark Souls 3 character Chris Jericho because those who invade others are on the list. $20 from an anonymous donor. Don't thank me for this. Thank Taco Champ. $20 from Ursula's Revenge. CTR is the reason my sisters don't play video games with me anymore. They just couldn't catch my drift. Good luck to the runner and to cancer, eat their dust. $10 from another anonymous donor. First time donating. I've been watching since 2012. Love the cause and the runners. It is so nice to see something so good in the world being done by all of you. And save the frames. Well, you know what to do. $20 from Artificial Paradise. It's amazing to see my favorite PS1 and PS2 games from my childhood being played so professionally. I could finally give to the charity, so I jumped right on it. Also, maybe kill those 50 animals. An anonymous $10 donation. Thanks for what you are doing, guys. Keep going. Greetings from Belgium. A simple donation from Super9. Awesome. Keep going. $5 from Smellick. I've been down with the flu since Wednesday morning. I cannot thank AGDQ, the staff, and the runners enough for the endless hours of entertainment. My donation goes towards killing cancer and killing the animals. You guys rock. $10.50 from NJ Coolneck. I don't always donate, but when I do, it's during crash runs. Amazing skills by Sword and a great marathon, as always, provides for the best entertainment. Much love from Germany. And a $10 anonymous donation. Have to donate to the series that got me into gaming. Cheers. $5 from an anonymous donor. I'm at work right now, so I can't watch. Doesn't mean I can't donate, though. After all, the animals aren't going to save themselves. And on that note, we actually have a very close race between Kill and Save the Animals right now. Kill the Animals is only ahead by $122.36. So if you want to save the animals, you can do it. Also, keep in mind the Dark Souls 3 Prince's Glitch exhibition coming up soon. We only need about $6,000 more dollars to meet that. As well as there is a character name incentive for that.
five dollars from Dr. Inkblot. Me and my brother have been fans of GDQ since we discovered the event three years ago. This time, I'm donating for the Dark Souls 3 Glitch Exhibition. That game nearly broke me, so I figured it's fair to return the favor. Fifty dollars from Awas. Crash is one of my favorite game series from the PS1. Thank you for th this awesome event. Ten dollars from an anonymous donor. First time watching GDQ live in 2017. Money goes to killing the animals because frames are people too. $20 from Bradley198. Thank you for playing that awesome music while we wait between runs. It keeps me hyped. $25 from Zydane. Great work, everyone. Tylac takes on the $5 Twitch chat challenge. We're not all imps. $10 from Mokai, who claims, if all people watching AGDQ right now donated $5, we could go way above the million dollars. My grandmother had breast cancer, and grandfather still struggles with multiple cancers. Let's do this, Twitch, I believe. $10 from Dogma, second time watching live, second time donating. I look forward to this every time and wish it was a quarterly thing. Shout out to the runners that make it happen. $50 from Dedisk2. Lost my grandfather to cancer and hope that this will never happen again. But nevertheless, I hope that we beat the AGDQ from last year and kill all the animals. $10 from Matthew Hollum. Finished every Souls game myself. Now I'm eager to see how the pros destroy one of my favorite series ever. First time ever donating, so good luck and have fun. $50 from Joey Snipes. So glad to see one of my favorite childhood games being demolished in another great run. Thank you to all of the GDQ staff and runners for supporting such a great cause. And we're ready to go to Sly Cooper and the Thevis for Kunis Any% percent with THMCS. Just get destroyed and just get everything. All right. So, uh, hello, everyone. I am a... Uh, yeah. Woo! <laughs> All right. All right. All right. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, this is like Cooper and the Theories Raccoonus. Uh, the timing starts when I hit new game here. Uh, I'm going to delete this file first, though. Like that. All right. So, I'll give you a countdown and we'll be good to go. So, three, two, one, and we're off. All right. Yay. All right. So, I uh, immediately save, uh, load the game here. Um, there's basically a cutscene that will start automatically when I start a new game, but you can kind of go into the pause menu during some cutscenes, and I can skip set cutscenes by loading the game. Also, just skip the entire intro, by the way. <laughs> um, you suppose, yeah, okay, so if you don't know what this game is, basically we are a thief right now, and we're supposed to go get our police uh, sort of file from the police headquarters here in Paris, but we just skipped that entire thing by doing that. And yeah, we escaped despite not being able to escape.
So that's pretty cool. Um, Once again, my gang and I have given this game has cutscenes, uh, so donations can be read during this, I guess, um, for the most Finally, part. The these cutscenes serve the purpose of letting uh, like this, the, the player know sort of the history of the characters. So this is basically just introductions to different, just kid, different things in the game. You see, I come uh, from these can also crash at random whenever they feel like it, so if that happens, the game will freeze essentially and I'll have to reset the game, but... Uh, Reddit, it's a wrap thing, so hopefully that won't which is happen why this time around. In stealing from criminals. After all, so no yeah, uh, I guess no we can use this time to introduce the couch people. if you guys want to say anything real quick. Alright, I'm Mr. Shasta. I'm Sword of Seals. Chris LBC. Well, on the night I was supposed to inherit the book, five right. visitors came unannounced to our door. So yeah, uh, Sly is a master thief from a My line of master thieves. He's like the... The, the only like remaining member of the family, I suppose, and this book right here, this is family heirloom, and it's been stolen. He wants to get it back, so he can get on it. Well, this is like his journey on becoming a master thief. He gets to earn the pages, whereas the rest of his like linear, uh, well, lineage even just kind of read the book and taught themselves to be a thief that way. Whereas Sly has to learn it through experience, getting the pages back. Murray. He also has two bodies here, driver, Bentley and Murray. Together we pledge to track down the fiendish five, avenge my father, and steal back the thievious All right, are you ready for this? This is going to be pretty hype. I'm going to do a grand total of four inputs in a little bit, and then we do well. Then we watch another cutscene, which is you know pretty amazing. I'm so ready. All right, you ready for this? I'm on edge my seat right now. Oh my god! All right. Oh, that's the first input. Okay. <laughs> it's a nice piece of work. I've got them all here on my computer. Alright. So we're going to press the X button to select things, and we're going to go into this hub world. This is the first world of the game, and uh, this cutscene will serve the purpose of introducing us to the first boss. It's this guy. He has a top hat on. He's pretty angry. As a young man, this hot-tempered frog grew bored of his life of luxury and privilege. On a whim, but yeah, if there are any donations now, like you can go ahead. We have like a good 30 seconds before the okay. starts. We have a $150 anonymous donation, which asks, we can save the animals? Sarah Ars162 donates $75. So glad that I can watch the Sly Cooper speedrun on my birthday. Thank you to all the runners, staff, and other donators. Let's kill cancer and kill the animals. Ten dollars from oh, never mind. That's the end of the cutscene. All right. So uh, the first level has two kind of skips, I guess. Um, but after that, there will be a lot of explaining in a very short amount of time. Um, a lot of strats will be pretty back to back, and it's going to be a little bit overwhelming. But I'll try my best to like explain exactly what I do. First of all, this sign is pretty magical, and we can go flying. Hey. Hey. <laughs> um, in this, cu in, well, if I had gone the intended way, I would have hit a cutscene on the other side of this rock, but we used that sign to get up there. Uh, this is called a proxy, but we don't like the word proxy apparently in the Slack Cube community, so we just refer to it as a catapult for the most part. But it is a proxy, so I don't know why we have to be special snowflakes. <laughs> um, there's a cutscene here. I can skip it by dying like that. Uh, basically, whenever I die, whenever I start a cutscene, the game will like just think that I've been watching it fully, even if I just started it. And if I just die in the cutscene, then I don't have to uh, to watch it again. Also, I just went out of bounds. Um, you'll see a lot of out of bounds in this run, and a lot of the things that I will be performing will be to prevent cutscenes from happening. There's a cutscene right beneath me right now, but I'm going to skip the trigger by going this way around. Like, there's a fence right behind me, and on the other side, we get taught how to press the circle button, so that's pretty cool. I guess we never get taught that this time around, but I think I'll manage. So that's, those were the two like kind of major skips in this. Um, this is sort of an introduction level to the first hub world. Every single hub world except the final one will have an introduction level before we get into the actual hub. I'm going to wait here because I don't like these cycles. Um, projector lights start out as yellow and they detect you when they're yellow. Um, when they turn red, they will kill you. And here's a key. So this indicates that we have beaten the first level of the game. Um, you get a key for a reward for beating the level. And you need seven grand, uh, well, you need seven keys for each hub world to get to the boss battle. 
but we're speedrunners and we don't like doing levels, so I'm gonna attempt to go into the boss a little bit earlier. But yeah, first of all, I'm going to load the game here. Uh, I'm basically on the same map as the hub world right now, and every single map has one spot you'll spawn into when you load the game. So I'll just load the game and I'll get in here and it skips a lot of cutscenes and a lot of platforming. Uh, there's a lucky charm here, like a horseshoe. I'm gonna pick, uh, pick this up, and if you were watching Crash Bandicoot 2 uh, a little while ago, you may be familiar with the concept, but this is a one-hit kill game. And this mask here, oh, it's not a mask, yeah, excellent. Uh, this charm here will, <laughs> will help me not die when I take damage. Uh, I also just tricked the god into shooting a generator. I'm supposed to have three keys before I can go past that. I don't like this lineup. Let's try again. All right, this strat is really, really hard. So basically what he's doing here is that oh. there's a cutscene that plays when you come out of the tunnel that explains the rest of this area. If he lines up his jump correctly, he can jump on oh, top of the yes. pipe, take out this guard, oh, yeah. and skip oh, the yeah. cutscene. That's actually really, really good that he did do that. Yeah. The cutscene takes ages to play out. There's another way I can prevent this, but this is like cooler, and I don't have to get another charm. So that's pretty nice. Also, I'm doing a series of jumps here called super jumping. Uh, essentially, Sly is stuck in an animation in which he doesn't hit the ground. And so the game thinks that the last time place I was was behind the cannon, and we're going to the boss battle now. You just entirely skipped the whole of the first homeworld. You have, normally, like the layout of the game is you have like lots of mini games and platforming segments that you have to be, and at the end of the segment, you have a key, and then when you get enough keys that you can just open the area uh, for the boss, but he literally just essentially just skips straight into the boss of the first world. Yeah, I also just reset the game. Um, this game has, every single time you enter a boss, there's like an um, like a, a introduction or a confrontation between like Sly and the boss that he's gonna face off in. And that's pretty slow, and it's been discovered that if you reset the game upon entering, you actually get to play the game faster than watching the cutscene. <laughs> Which, I mean, you don't really skip the cutscene, I guess, well you do, but you still have to watch this. Um, but it's still, it ends up being faster, so I'll take it. Also, we get to see this uh, biblical intro every single time, so that's cool. Uh, yeah, this is the first boss. This is Sir Riley the Frog, and he's a frog. And he has a top hat, and he bounces around. Um, this is a very straightforward boss, uh, and I don't really need to do much explaining, so if, anyone, if there are any donations, you can go ahead. Okay, we have $20 from Misty Antelope. Here's 20 bucks for a great game and a great announcer despite the cold. Put the money to the announcer's choice. $10 from Baronon. Had to donate during Sly Cooper, still one of my favorite games from childhood. Money goes towards Kill the Animals and the Dark Souls exhibition glitch. Oh. Let's show those princes around the town. $15 from Quasi Competent. Hey, first time donator and it had to be during the PlayStation block. My aunt died of breast cancer over a year ago, so let's get cancer back in revengeance. Also, save the animals. $8 from FlabX100. This is for my favorite raccoon getting to show off a great game at AGDQ. Good luck with Sly, Mickle. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just beat the first boss. Um, I paused the game and then like I hit him in the fade out. What that does is that it essentially skips an outro cutscene from the boss. Uh, when you beat him, you get one of these cinematic cartoony cutscenes, um, but we skip that by loading the game. That's another way to do it, but it's it like been a while you have since I've been back in the US. significantly less than half a second to do yes, it, I and this is a marathon, so I don't want to risk it. Notorious mugshot. But essentially, one Who thing that's important to know about this game is that the second you get the auto save, you beat whatever you're doing. So, despite me loading the game, I did beat the boss. Poor mugshot. Poor mugshot. Yeah. The only friends he could turn to were usually found on the big screen. His only friends are on the, on the big screen. He his first gangster, and he knew instantly that's what he wanted to he do. He turns into gangster see. He spent the rest of his youth working real hard to get there, fueled on his dreams of great power and respect. With enough perspiration, he realized that dream. He'd become a hard-boiled, street brawling tough with nails gangster, ensuring that he never right, had to so push around again. We get to have a little bit more gameplay in between the cutscenes soon. Uh, the opening game, or the opening part of the run, is really interesting in the sense that there are a lot of skips, but unfortunately it gets kind of dragged out a bit, because we can't skip some of these cutscenes. But um, the cutscenes aren't bad, at least, so that's something. They're pretty interesting when you get to be introduced to the characters, so 
it adds to the charm of this game. Like, unfortunately for, you know, the whole the charm of the game is that we skip all of the cutscenes, essentially, but the characters are all really good. It's a very playful and colorful game. So we do get to keep at least some of it. Also, oh, that was really close to being really bad. Uh, I just jumped around that, and I'm going to jump around this, too. This like, level is not very well designed, to say the least. I'm supposed to, like, climb over stuff and use my thief uh, abilities, but I can just kind of jump around it. Also, this is the reason why I saved the charm from the first level. There we go. I just skipped the cutscene. The charm allows me to not die, and I can use my movement momentum to fall off that platform as I enter the cutscene. Um, there's no checkpoint near me like there were in the first level, so I kind of need the charm, otherwise I would have died and had to redo the level, and that would not have ended up being faster, but in this case it was because I had a charm. Uh, the rest of this level is pretty straightforward and self-explanatory. I would pick this conveniently located charm up on my way to the end, but I don't really have much else to go through here, so if you have more donations, you can go ahead. We have $10 from the Avenger. Hey, Minho, I've been waiting all week to donate during your run of Sly Cooper and the Thingus Racumagus, and let's hope for first try sign skip. Good luck, man. $20 from Semper Rabbit. This is one of the first games that I've played. So nostalgic. Great game and look forward to seeing the speedrun. Great job and kill the animals. $10 from the man of the hour. First time watching GDQ and it's been great. Looking forward to watching Grand Pooh Bear wreck Dram World. Also, kill cancer, kill the animals. All right. So I'm going to do the same thing I did in the first world where I load the game to go into the hub and skipping some of the little platforming sections that are leading up to the actual hub world. Uh, we're instantly greeted by cutscene, but once again, this is one of those we can load by skipping. Uh, skip by loading, even. Nice. Uh, guards don't care if you jump into the lights, by the way. You have to be on the ground, so that's pretty nice. Uh, also, I wasn't satisfied enough by the sign, so I want to go flying again. There we go. So yeah, uh, you're supposed to have three keys before you can go into the casino, which means you need to beat three levels. Right now I only have one key, but I just did that instead. So I'm going to go into the casino a bit early, and from here I can do another uh, super jump chain, and I can go into the boss early on. Like such, just behind the mustache, and there we go. Let me start the game again. I don't think Mugshot's quite prepared as to how quickly you're, you're going to be showing up at his lair, because you pretty much just skipped everything. <laughs> yeah. If you play the game as you're intended to, he uh, kind of keeps contacting you in the levels through like an intercom system. Well, not necessarily you, but he's talking to like his guards and his goons and like telling that them that there's a raccoon on the prowl and <laughs> they need to be careful. Um, so yeah, we d he doesn't really get to do that this time around, so he's not really prepared. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this boss battle here. For whatever reason, these crystals here will burn him when I flip the mirrors. I, this bo I mean, I don't know, this game doesn't really make too much sense, but it's a video game, you shouldn't really question it, I suppose. So I'm gonna wait here, and then hit Mugshot right after I flip that mirror. That skips a five to seven second cutscene where he like complains that his beautiful guns have been destroyed. And he has a spare upstairs. But we can skip that, because he can't do the cutscene if he's already doing an animation, which he is if I hit him. Have to wait for you here. I'm not getting the best of patterns right now in this movement, but it's okay. And I can just jump off here, because yeah, you don't die if the cutscene starts. Alright, so I'm going to be performing a pretty difficult jump here, and if I mess it up, I may lose two minutes, but it's okay, because I won't mess it up, so. Excellent. Fantastic. That's really hard. There you go. Phew. <laughs> I was a bit afraid of that one. Oh, there we go. Uh, we beat the two first worlds now. We've only been playing for a good 15 minutes, I guess, right now. And we're going to the third world. So that's pretty cool. Um, after this, we'll actually be playing the game the and not watching cutscenes all the time. Five. So the uh, we get to switch it up a little bit and do a little thing called get keys, 
Born into a family of mystics, that's cool. other children found her scary. Teaching herself to summon the undead We're going to Haiti provided right what few friends uh, she had. A She's kind of turned a little swamp into the world, a voodoo center, I guess. Chief mystic for the fiendish five, her powers allowed them to break both the laws of man and nature at the same time. Yet despite the whirlwind success of her youth, she managed to slip into obscurity. Right. Last name sightings claim she headed out of civilization and deep into the Haitian jungle. So we're gonna go deep into the Haitian jungle here, and hopefully we'll come out all right. This is where the run really kicks off. I like to say that uh, the run doesn't really start until after Mugshot, because the first part of the game is incredibly grindy, uh, in the sense that, at least me as a runner, I like to optimize the early game as much as I can. And yeah, it, you reach that a lot, unfortunately, because it's really tricky to get a good opening. Oh, dang. But yeah, this is the opening level. Uh, this is the Dread Swamp path. And yeah, this is just pretty straightforward. There's like one jump that isn't intentional. It's called the Nuka Jump, and it was, I want to say recently discovered, but it really isn't. It's been like one and a half years ago since we incorporated into the runs, but shout out to Nuka Duke for finding this on accident. I messed it up. Let's try again. <laughs> I messed up again, I'm just gonna not do it then. It's fine. Um, I could have gotten that Lucky Charm up there, but I don't wanna keep trying it. So, it's fine. The Lucky Charm isn't needed, it's just a really nice little thing to have in case you make a mistake. Also, I jump on that tree trunk instead of going down the slope. There's a cutscene on the slope. Cutscenes are slow, we skip them. Yeah, breaking all these uh, candles will uh, disable the voodoo magic that is blocking this key in. And I got the key. And there we go. Level done. So I go unlock the gate and we'll be good to go. Oh, these coins, by the way. I didn't really explain these coins. Um, you don't really be seeing too much of the coins in the run because like, you don't really need them that much. But coins will give you a lucky charm if you receive 100 of them. If you already have one lucky charm, you'll get a golden one. As you'd expect, that means you can take damage twice without dying. Uh, if you have a golden one, you get 100 coins, you'll get an extra life. The voodoo vibe is thick tonight. Alright, so this is the layer of the beast. If you ever played this game yourself, you may remember a giant snake here trying to like chase you down. But snakes are pretty scary, and I'm a speedrunner, so I don't wanna, I don't wanna play with the snake right now. So I'm going to kind of skip it if I can. First of all, I'm going to attempt this tree trunk. There we go. Uh, you can go out of bounds. Like, you can basically skip the entire trigger for the entire uh, sort of chase sequence by going out of bounds, just like that. Uh, when you, yeah. Yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> oh, please don't fall down. Good. Um, yeah, stuff in this game that you can grab onto have weird properties. So if I jump off immediately, I get like a boost to my jump. And that's essentially what happened there. Uh, I got like an extended jump, which allowed me to let's grab. I actually didn't even let's grab. I just kind of landed there, which is pretty cool. But I can go to the wall and be out of bounds for a while. So this is Piranha Lake. And I mean, oh I don't man. like this level because <laughs> it, it's pretty <laughs> random. Uh, these fish that are all around the place here, uh, I'm supposed to pick them up and then use them to turn on these torches here, like light them up. Uh, they basically like, I skip the cutscene immediately as I go in, but ba ba basically Bentley tells me that when I pick them up they turn into oil. And I guess you can light oil on fire. But yeah, uh, this is really RNG heavy. Uh, we can't really decide where the fish will spawn or how they will move around. We can kind of manipulate it though by like, if I move in a specific way, I can get them to group up, and if I can group them up, I can get them out at once, which is pretty neat. Unfortunately, they're being meanies right now and not staying inside. They're going over here, which means I have to travel farther to get them. But yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory what's going on, but this is actually relatively decent if I can... Just there we go. Alright, this is a pretty good fish. I'm actually really excited that these fish went well, because they never do. 
fucking just find the best torch. There it is. Alright, a minute left on the timer. That's actually really good. I probably saved 20 seconds on my PB there. Well done. There we go. I really hope I got that key. Please tell me I got that key. <laughs> just gonna check. I did not get. Oh, I did get the key. Excellent. All right. I was scared there. I didn't see the animation. <laughs> Don't scare me like that. Uh, if I hadn't gotten the key, I would have to do the level again, which would have been a slight inconvenience, but it's okay. Because we got it. It's fine. So this is a grave undertaking, um, also known as a grave floor and level design. <laughs> yeah, we can skip this entire level, essentially, but it requires a pretty hard jump. Uh, first of all, we're just going to jump around this guy. This golem's are scary. Oh, this goal is still a little bit frisky. All right, so um, this hook is dumb, but oh, I was so close. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Yeah, I can like I can get on top of this hook and go out of bounds and go to the end of the level. There we go. There nice. you go. Nice. That jump used to be considered IL only, but a guy called Lovable Landjump decided to incorporate it into his runs, and the rest of us just kind of adapted to it. But yeah, I think I think the, I think Triplosaurus Rex found that threat forever ago. He's like a known IL runner of this game. Back when ILs were relatively relevant in this run, not really anymore, but it used to be around. Also, just went out of bounds, but I completely just neglected to talk about that. Uh, this game is really easy to get out of bounds and you just kind of have to jump up a wall. And yeah, I, the reason I do that, I mean, I do have all the keys, so I could do it the intentional way, but the intentional way requires me to go to the center of the hub, unlock three locks, and have the giant snake from before mentioned level break down a gate. And that's kind of slow, so. Yo, bone jump, nice. Like I said before. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh. That's fine. Um, no, like I said before, if you jump off like platforms or things you can grab really, really fast, uh, you get like a little boost. And I got over the spikes on the platform doing just that. Oops. Yeah, I wasn't mashing hard enough on the... I had to climb that rope, I didn't do it fast enough, so... Uh, yeah, I got, kinda got sniped, but it's alright, because there's a free lucky charm here. Hopefully I'm not gonna mess this up. There we go. That cycle, it's not really that tight, but I moved kind of slowly there, unfortunately. But it's fine, because we didn't mess up. Um, we're just going to glide toward the end of the level. Um, unfortunately, we don't see Slide getting off-centered. He does that sometimes, and it looks pretty funny. But hopefully, we get to see that later in the run. Uh, whenever I hit the key, you might have noticed that I pause the game and press exit level. Uh, whenever I pick up a key, you've seen it twice already uh, in the, the o like intro levels. Actually, you've seen it three times uh, in the intro levels. Um, I get like this animation where Sly will victoriously throw the key into the sky and like grab it with his cane and throw it in his backpack. That entire thing is like seven seconds long, so we can just skip that by exiting the level after getting the autosave because autosave means you win the game. So yeah, um, I have a lucky charm here. I'm gonna see if I can keep it into the introduction level for the next world. There's a pretty cool strat I can do, but if I lose this charm, it's not the end of the world. Also, you can go ahead and read the donations if you want. Okay, we have $25 from Ruinous Rapture. Saving frames is a strategy that should assist in a 100% completion, not a justification for laziness when speedrunning. Get good, kill cancer, and save the animals. $5 anonymous donation. Hi, Mihil. It's so good to finally see my favorite speed run with my favorite speedrunner. Good luck on your run. P.S. Slewman. Thank you. Okay, so the, uh, the first part of the level there is a bit of an honest run, as you can tell. Um, this vehicle is present twice in the run. Uh, the next time we'll see it, I won't like it this much. Oh, that was dangerous. Um, yeah, but I'll get to that later. This vehicle is kind of evil. I'm just going to get to the end of this level. There's a lot of coins we can get. I kind of want to get 100 coins at one point, but I don't want it like now. I want it later in the run. So I'll collect as many as I can without slowing down. There 
go. And the end of the level is coming up here. Uh, this is one of the levels where we actually cannot skip the intro, or the, not the intro, the, uh, like the key cutscene slash animation. So you get to see what I mean in a second. These ghosts really want to hawk me, by the way, but I'm not too keen. There we go. There's the cutscene of oh, animation. Demons. Good job, Sly. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is the final key before we get to uh, face the boss. This is called Down Home Cooking. Uh, I prefer to just call it chickens. Um, but yeah, you'll see why, <laughs> I guess, in a second. I'm gonna reset the game immediately. Uh, reset the level, even. Um, it skips a cutscene, and suddenly I'm whacking chickens for apparently no reason, but there is a reason. You just didn't get to hear it. Uh, right now, underneath the ceiling, there's a friendly ghost sawing around. He's in the possession of a treasure key that he would like to hand over to me if I can whack 50 chickens for him. Uh, and he wants the chickens for gumbo. He wants to cook up some chicken gumbo, and who can blame him, really? Chicken gumbo is delicious. I took damage, so that, there goes that charm, unfortunately. Do not spawn on me like that. Oh. That is dangerous. Go away. <laughs> Uh, these um, roosters that chase me down have kind of a wonky hitbox at times. So sometimes, even though I don't really hit them, I still get hit, which is a little bit of an inconvenience. But this has been really good chickens, actually. I'm on 40 already, and there's 40 seconds left, approximately. So that's really, really good. I might load the... G actually, you know what? I'm going to get my charm back. I want to show Bubba Strat. So... When I get the key, I'm going to load the game before I pick it up. That way, it'll load the save file and then override it. Yeah, that's this mini game. So I'm going to load the game here. Normally, I would just pause the game when I get the key, but now I got now I beat the level and I got the uh, the lucky charm back, which is pretty cool. <laughs> Thank you, guys. And here we go. So this is the third boss. And it's pretty interesting. We get to skip two of her faces. There are four total. But first, importantly, we have to reset the game. <laughs> you get the picture. <laughs> yeah, this will happen once more. We don't do it on the final boss, because the final boss is a little bit different. So yeah. Get to see the PlayStation 2 screen open up. Oh, I should mention, by the way, I'm playing on a backward compatible PS3. Um, it was discovered that the PS3 is about 40 to 45 seconds faster than the PS2 due to the resets and loading times. Uh, however, the PS2 version, oh, well, I'm playing the PS2 version, but the PS2 console is entirely viable for the run as well. Um, so if you're wondering why I'm like able to reset the game during the PlayStation 3 menu, but still have the PS2 screen showing, it's because I'm playing on a backward compatible PS3. Uh, also, shout outs to Mr. Girk for letting me borrow his. My own broke the day before I left for HDQ, so that was kind of disheartening. <laughs> but uh, it's fine, because I got to borrow this one instead. Also, I'm going to go out of bounds again. What I did there is called a slope jump. And basically, I just face up the side of the wall and mashing X. Uh, I'm going to lose this lucky charm here that I saved to get back, but I will get it back again, because I'm going to load the game. I just fell off. That's annoying. All right, so we're going to keep out of bounds for a bit. And I'm going to follow the water behind her. Now, you're not supposed to be in this water un unless you, like, die in the second phase of the boss battle. Um, so the fact that I hit the water makes the game think that, oh, you probably just died in the second phase. So here we are, just getting the first one. Uh, you'd think it would be too fast to go and smack her, but doing that starts a 40-second cutscene. And we don't like cutscenes. All right, just do a little bit of a little bit of DDR here. I tend to mash the buttons instead of like timing them. Um, it's actually really hard to uh, to time it properly, and also the game likes to drop some inputs here and there. It's a lot of stuff going on on the screen. 
So I always like this Nash just to be safe. Um, there are two more phases left of the boss battle, but I'm going to finish things on this one. First of all, we have to get to it though. Also, the, the roosters from before hanging out around here, just dancing. We're getting there. We're getting there. I would actually say this is probably the hardest boss of them all uh, in the casual playthrough. Alright, so I'm gonna go behind her, load the game, and then spam the button and hit her twice in the fade out. Basically, she had two hits left on her, like she had two hit points left. And you may have noticed that this game doesn't immediately load a save file, it like fades out. So I load, I load the original save file, which will give me back my charm, and in the fade out I will hit her for those two hit points that she has left, and then the game auto saves. So essentially the save file that I just loaded, uh, it, it's o overridden, so it loads another one, I guess. Uh, and that allows me to beat the boss, get my charm back, and now I can go to... The fourth hut. But when he tried to offer his fireworks to the nobleman, just the panicking. They couldn't see past his shabby clothes and chase them away. He just wants to make fireworks, man. <laughs> Humiliated, the panda king took revenge on those who shunned him by using the very tools of his art as crime. Well, so I don't have a whole lot to say in this next level. So if you want to go ahead and read donations, you can go ahead. Okay, we have seventy-five dollars from an anonymous donor. Awesome event. I apologize if it's already been said, but where is the runner, THMCS, from? He sounds like a local boy. That is Danish. If I'm right, I'll donate another 25 to kill the animals. If I'm wrong, I'll donate 25 to Runner's Choice. You're correct. $100 from Hobsit. A heartfelt thank you for all you do. Donation to Announcer's Choice. And do you want me to keep going through the level? Yeah, you can go ahead and do that. Okay. $80 from Spade Mate. I've probably played through Sly Cooper at least 50 times. I love this game and I'm happy to see it at a GDQ event. Good luck, THMCS. I look forward to seeing how much you can break this game so close to my heart. $50 from Shoulders Man. I just recently got into AGDQ and speedrunning in general. I love watching games from my childhood be absolutely destroyed. What better time to donate than during the PlayStation block? All the great classics like Crash, Spyro, Jack, and even Sly Cooper. Money goes to the runner's choice. All right. So you may have noticed me kind of walking around again. Uh, I kind of forgot to <laughs> that I had to do that strat. So, but yeah, I, I'll just explain it now. Um, I just, you can, like I said, it's really easy to guard out in this game, and everything is ledge grabbable. So good on you, Sucker Punch. But uh, I went. And skip, oh well, uh, skip the trigger, I should say, for a cutscene where the Panic King demonstrates the power of his fireworks by burying an entire village in snow, which is a little bit graphic for a children's game. But, you know, he's a panda, he can do what he wants. Um, I do have a charm here, so in a little bit I'll attempt a jump, which will. It looks like it saves a lot more than it does, but it doesn't actually save that much on this particular level. But it, ha it puts me in a more convenient place for. Uh, a rail shooter in the level following this one, which uh, is a little bit faster. It saves about nine seconds in total. Dude, this is the vault. Also, I just hit some, uh, I hit fireworks through the wall. All right. Oh no, you know what? Oh, he hit me, damn it. All right, well, I guess the strat isn't happening. <laughs> All right, it's fine. So what he was going to attempt to do there was basically do like another one of those launches where he tricks the game into thinking that he hasn't landed and then fall off and it would send him back into the next area that he needs to progress to. He would have then loaded and saved the game in there and then gotten the key and then done another save load and it would have like obsoleted some movement. Uh, basically what it would do is it would, allow, like I, I would go through the wall and I would hit the trigger to end this level and I would actually gain, um, I would gain access to the hub world. But the thing is, 
like I could go and do all the levels from that, but I do need the key to get to the boss. So what I would do instead was would be I would want to go back into the level, uh, get the key, and pause the game immediately, so that I could na map navigate back to the hub world. Because you'll see now, I'll be in a very inconvenient spot. I'll be down here. I have to load the game. I would skip this load entirely, plus a little bit of traveling, going back from the key. We're getting that strat, which would put me in a more like convenient location for this level, but it's okay. It's like a, it's about ten seconds lost. But it's alright. I think I'm gonna load the game again here. Uh, Murray is our hippo friend. We haven't really seen him much in this run yet, but he's right here. He's waiting at us. What's up, Murray? What a nice guy. He's great. I'm gonna try and shoot that. There we go. <coughs> alright, so Murray has decided that it's time for him to leave the van, and he wants to get a key. He wants to prove his worth to the Koopa clan. And yeah, we're going to have to be his guardian ancient and shoot away all the dudes trying to stop him. Um, I happen to know exactly where everyone spawns, so I'm just shooting them before they even get a chance to, to hurt him. But Yeah, uh, there's a few ways you can do this a little bit faster. Like if I shoot the guards before Murray gets scared, he doesn't like run off and cower. Which is, you know, saves you a little bit of time. But okay. everything is worth saving. Oh, thanks. I think you have to be careful to not hit Murray as well, because I think you fail the mission if you hit him with the turret, if I'm yes. not mistaken. If you shoot yeah. Murray, he dies. Even if he has a lucky charm, he will die. Yeah. Oh, this guy's a little bit of a meanie. He did not want to go down. That's fine. So we're nearing the end of the level. Um, it's a very interesting thing that can happen over here. I hope that won't happen, because I will lose minutes. But... It looks fun, so I mean, I wouldn't be too upset if it happened. But yeah, basically, Mario can like slide off the side and just die. <coughs> Did not happen, so that's good. Yeah, sometimes he just kind of slips off here and falls forever. Oh, look, a key. Let's go get it. I wonder what'll happen. Oh, dang, an alarm. All right, so guards are gonna spawn, and this is another little bit of RNG. Is pretty irrelevant though, like. I just don't know where they'll spawn, so I just have to react to where they spawn. There's no set pattern. No configurations. Like, it will always be random. They're spawning in good locations, though. I want them to spawn down and not on the roofs, because it takes longer to shoot them on the roofs, because I have to get the crosshair in position. Way to go! <laughs> Murray, please. What's going on with his scarf? It's like all transparent. <laughs> that doesn't happen at home. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, this level is really cool. This is like my favorite level in this, uh, in this world. Or in this hub world. It's called the Unseen Foe. Okay, it has a lot of cool stuff to it. There's gonna be a guard coming up in a little bit, and I'm supposed to use these conveyor belts. Like, I have invisibility now, by the way. I was supposed to use these conveyor belts to go through the guards' lights, but I can just do that instead, because once again, guards don't care if you jump over the lights. There's a whole pagoda over here. I can skip that by jumping to the scout house. Boom. So yeah, I just skipped like, this entire tower over here. I can like show it off. There we go, it's over there. I want to see the Bainaki come, but apparently I can't do that when Bentley talks, <laughs> from all you know. <laughs> This monkey's a little bit annoying sometimes, so I'm just gonna take him out so he doesn't nudge me off the side. Oh, I died anyway. Great. <laughs> yeah, you can jump on this little uh, railing thing on the little bridge, and uh, you can kind of let scrap the roof and get up a little bit faster than the intended way. Obviously, it's not gonna be faster now because I died, but it's still alright. We'll do it again. We'll run it back. There we go. So I'm gonna skip like an entire pagoda again. I'm supposed to ride this uh, thing all the way to the building to my left. This is not good. <laughs> Please stop. Oh, whatever. We'll just go this way. This level is pretty, so we get to watch it a little bit more. 
Are you? <laughs> I think what he's trying to land on like a really small hitbox that's part of the fence, and then he's uh, yeah, aiming to grab onto that and then jump Usually he up. like let's grab stuff. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. It's fine though. Hopefully this will be the last time we mess this up. There we go, Sly. Good job. There we go. There you go. Fantastic. Well there we go. That's that level done. Twenty-nine percent. So that level is really cool. Unfortunately, I made it look not very cool because I messed up, <laughs> but it's okay. This level is the Flaming Temple of Flame. There's a, like physics in this game, if you haven't noticed already, uh, they're pretty broken. And I can use a lot of momentum to go and basically skip a good maybe two thirds of the level here. There are some hooks, I'm supposed, like I can elevate myself to get on top of this little roof that the <laughs> hooks are hanging from, just like that. And that skips this entire room to my right. And I can just, Carry on. And now I have a lucky charm. Hopefully I will be able to carry this lucky charm all the way to the end of the game. So you guys remember how I said that I didn't like that vehicle from before? Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna see some more of this vehicle in a little while, a little bit. Uh, the next level is called, well, it's not called spinning, but I call it spinning. Because you have to use this vehicle to kind of clip out of bounds and go to the end of the level. But first, I have to go out of bounds without the vehicle. If I can land on this thing, please. There we go. So once again, I do have all the keys. Uh, I could do it the intentional way to get to the second part of the hub, but it's just all dragged out and takes forever, so we're just gonna do this instead. Oh, nice. This is rapid fire assault. Um, so we have the vehicle back here, and I'm going to spin in this corner frantically until I get out of bounds. <laughs> and this is the single stupidest strat in this entire run, because it's completely out of my control. And that happens sometimes. I'm happy I did not get launched out the level, at least. Sometimes this takes four seconds, other times it takes a minute. You could imagine how many runs die to this. Oh, there, there you go. go. Awesome. There you go. It's something that just saves so much time that you can't not do it, even though like the pure random nature of it can just work against you sometimes. Exactly, yeah. Um, I like to say if you get launched out of bounds before Bentley is like, done talking, it was a decent spinning, and that was the case in the time rounds. That was actually really good. Could have been faster, but it was good. I'm happy that didn't take longer than it needed to. So that's rapid fire assault down. Two levels to go before the boss. Uh. All right, this level is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I'm going to skip a cut, well, I'm gonna go around a cutscene trigger that doesn't extend to this entire roof here. So I just hug the left, like so. I'm not gonna start the cutscene, but for now anyway, there's nothing much to go through. So if you wanna read some donations, this is a good time. Nice launch, holy dang. Okay. <laughs> we have $20 from Jay Wright. Hey, just wanted to say Sly Cooper 1 was the first and only game I've ever beaten 100%. 10 years ago when I was 12, and seeing it get broken within the first five minutes, I knew I had to donate. Please give this donation to Runner's Choice. Renacap donates $40. I've been watching the marathon all week, and it is great to see someone playing Sc Sly Cooper, one of the games that stole my heart as a kid. Thanks to everyone involved with this awesome event. $50 from KB. For my father, who has beaten oral melanoma twice in the last two years. Much love to the Sly series. It's one of my favorites. Thanks to all the runners and support staff. Donation to Runner's Choice, please. Keep up the good work. And $10 from Beanie Bambimo. 
first time donation and first AGDQ. This is in honor of my boyfriend, Felwing, who is a childhood cancer survivor. I don't think I'd be who I am today without the Sly Cooper series. All of these little tricks are blowing my mind. All right, so um, you saw me lose the charm there. I'm, I'll get it back, because this game is pretty cool like that. But uh, I need to do a death abuse, which you just witnessed. Uh, I tried to like jump up that little uh, barrel, I guess, like the, the, the pole there. Um, doing a slope jump, which will extend my hitbox up upwards, and that uh, can catch the little checkpoint there. So after I just jumped off the cliff, getting the checkpoint, I ended up spawning up here, which saves, I, I want to say, about 25 to 30 seconds of platforming. Uh, so that's really neat. And now we have the key. I'm going to load the game to get my charm back. And there we go. All right, so this level is a mini game, but we found a way to skip the w like the actual mini game itself. This is a race. You're supposed to race uh, some monkeys here. Murray once again has ventured outside of the comfort zone of the hideout, except he hasn't really, because the hideout is the van which he's driving. Um, yeah, <laughs> he wants to get get a key. We can't skip this cutscene, but we can mess around with the heads instead. I hate it when that happens, man. Yeah, so yeah, when monkeys are everywhere, it's bad. <laughs> Slice having a seizure. Alright. Alright, here we go. So, yeah, this race. Um, we, can, we can get the key without being the race by performing a strat called the race skip, found by a guy called Nitram. Um, this is the one of the newest additions to the run, and essentially I just do this. First try. Oh yeah, yeah. nice. Let's go. <laughs> there we go. Amazing. That's actually, that strat has given me a lot of trouble lately. I lost a fantastic run. That was 47 seconds ahead of my record. And I just lost like the entire lead on that level because I messed it up like seven times. But we're good. We're gonna go to the boss now. I believe this is the last time you'll turn off the console as well, I, believe, I think. Yeah. Correct. So we're going to face off against Kung Fu Panda now. <laughs> Except not now, I guess. You can have to reset. Jack Black. <laughs> Thanks, Jack Black. <laughs> this is Kung Fu Panda before he went into hibernation. <laughs> he said read a donation. Or I said hibernation, but you can read a donation. Oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> you, you both said <laughs> hibernation, read a donation. There's um, nothing really going on in this cut. Uh, this $10 fight anyway, so. from Ecto Choir. Another 10 bucks for those awesome skips. Who knew slime is magic and could face through solid objects? This donation goes to announcer's choice. Okay, so uh, the Panda King has mastered the art of flame foo, and he's going to throw fireballs at me. Unfortunately, he's not very good at close combat. So I just kind of run up to him and smack him with my cane. Gotta love some fiery wheel. So fun fact about this, uh, this was actually supposed to be the first hop world of the game. Oh, sorry, the second hop world of the game. Which you can tell by the fact that how easy, the, like this boss battle is ridiculously easy. But they switched it around sometime during development. And yeah, it's also, there's a race in the uh, second world as well, which is significantly more difficult than this one. So yeah, a lot of the stuff uh, got switched around. That's him. <laughs> I see you in Kung Fu Panda 4. <laughs> <laughs> Evil Poe. All right, so coming up is the late game, and this we were on our it's going to be really tricky. The late game is incredibly unforgiving and very evil. Um, it starts out with an auto scroller, so that's nice. But we have three or so skips. One of them isn't really a skip, it's just a really tight timing. But there are two skips coming up and one ridiculously hard timing. And also a RNG minigame. So this is going to be like, it's really, really hard to perfect this. And 
the chances of being messed over is pretty high. Uh, they're pretty high. But hopefully, we can just nail everything. All right. It's serious time, boys. So yeah, I mean, I don't know. There's nothing to really talk about in this level, though. This is like the silence before the storm. This is just a, a little chill off a scroller. Sly has installed a turret on top of the dam. Well, the clock sly. I love Mario's voice in this game. It's so goofy. It's great. Oh, dang it. Get back here. <laughs> no, are you kidding me? Oh, oh, no. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Never uh, actually seen what the owls do when you don't shoot them. So. Oh, no, I'm in trouble here. Damn it, there's so many rocks. <laughs> oh, that was clutch. <laughs> All right, well, I don't have a charm anymore, so that's like one strat I'm not going to be doing now, I guess. There's a really cool jump in the boss, but if I mess it up, I lose three minutes, so I'm not going to do it now, sadly. And this is one of the levels where I can't just load the game to get it back, and there are no charms to pick up. I guess technically I could just, like, leave the level, go get a charm, go back to the boss battle and show it off if you want to watch it and see it, I guess. I should, yeah, I should have fine time on the estimate anyway, so... I might do that, actually. It's a really cool jump. I could do it without a charm as well, but if I mess it up, I have to do the boss again. Oh, <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> Please stop. Keeping you on your toes there. Oh, all right. There you go. That was, yeah. Well done. Nice shoot. <laughs> <laughs> that is usually not that clutch. <laughs> it's usually not that clutch. All right, so this is the mini game I was talking about. All right, so there are 119 computers on the ceiling. And Bentley just knows that because, I don't know, he's a turtle, he knows everything. And, yeah, uh, when you get 60 computers, you get enough data to unlock this gate, I guess. And you need to beat all these uh, fire slugs. Now, there's no real uh, technique to this. Some people like to claw the controller to have better uh, control over the, um, the camera. But what I do as a runner myself is just... I. I do the same thing, really. I just don't claw. Like, I just bank the camera around a lot, keep a good eye on the arena, make sure I can pick up everything and take care of the slugs as well. Where the slugs spawn is pretty random. The quantities of, this, of the computer spawns is also pretty random. Also, where they spawn. Sometimes you can get lucky and, like, seven computers just drop on you when you, like, drive around. But, uh... Yeah, doesn't seem to be the case right now. I did a practice run of this where I nearly lost this mini, mini game. I nearly like, I think the Fire Slugs had 52 computers by the time I finished that. All right, one more. Oh, M my God, the troll. <laughs> They're teasing you with that one. They put it right next to yeah, the exit and then yeah. he took it. But good job. <laughs> Murray can't drive, by the way. I don't know if we'll be able to see this now. He might just like hit the wall. Yeah, he will. <laughs> Not a lot. He just bonked it. Sometimes he like drives into the wall and like it's really slow. Good luck with the skip. Thank you. All right, so this is Bentley skip. Uh, you see our little buddy over here, love interest, come lead a fox that we have seen nothing to in the entire game because we skip everything she's in pretty much. But she's over here. She's been captured by clockwork. And being the gentleman thief that we are, we want to save her. But I don't want to do that, so I'm going to skip it. Oh, that was good. Basically, if I go in there, I'll start a cutscene, and that cutscene will lead into a minigame, and I don't want to do the minigame. I can skip it by doing that. Fantastic. Yes! Nice. Oh.
as well. Make this timing up. <coughs> nice. Yes, awesome. I just saved a minute, by the way, <laughs> by pausing the game at the right frame. So how it's meant to play out in the previous room is that you walk into the room and then toxic fumes fill up the room. And it's basically a set of trap where uh, Carmelita's is trying to catch a Sly. And then your friend uh, Bentley basically has to hack his way into the computer to stop the gas from flowing. Uh, it wastes so much time to do it, which is why it's yeah. so imperative to do that. You can, uh, you can actually start the cutscene, go into the level and leave the level four times before it's too slow to do Bentley's skip. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a, wow, you just snug out, didn't you? Uh, yeah, it's it's a very long mini game, and it's actually pretty difficult too. I think in this uh, era, she has a bit of a change of heart, and you decide to work together with her. Yeah. Uh, well, we save her. We don't, though. We skip it, but we're <laughs> supposed to save her, uh, and she helps us out. Cause Sly loses his cane. He doesn't have it right now. It's right there. There's a Robo Falcon that steals it. Come here, shoots that Robo Falcon, and Sly needs to go get it back. Nice so we have to cover him. Nice job, Raccoon. All nice right, so this is the very last level of the game before the final boss. This could, I don't know. I feel like this is still just barely on sub one pace, which would be really freaking epic if I got that. <laughs> oh, drink it. Okay, well, I'm <laughs> let's just do this, Dad. <laughs> All right, so physics are cool. Skip up here. Jump on these cogwheels to skip that section over there. This is a really cool level, actually. Um, it tends to like it doesn't really drop inputs, but sometimes the game would like sometimes the game like makes a slide latch on to things that he's not supposed to latch onto. So like if I jump across the circle button here, sometimes he'll jump on one of the other things. And if I hit the, that like electricity in the middle there, I will die. So that's always a little bit scary. Sly basically has a mind of his own. This section just terrifies me so much. <laughs> it's a I make it look a little bit more, like, tight than it is. It did that again. It needs to stop doing that. <laughs> that middle one is not supposed to be, like, electric, uh, electric when I climb up there. I was to get ready for the final boss. Clockwork himself. I'm going to load the game, though, because I don't want to talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. So this is the final boss, and, like... Honestly, if you take everything about this boss, you have the soundtrack, you have the fact that we are flying over a giant pit of lava in a volcano in Russia, and fighting a, a metal owl shooting stuff at us. This is one of the most epic boss battles I've ever seen, and I really enjoy it. It's not too difficult to do, but it's really awesome. Like, everything about this boss battle is awesome. He like, he's like taunting you, like, my skills are superior. My experience is greater. That's the first phase. There's three phases total. The burn, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sly's pretty good at talking smack. He all, like we skipped that cutscene, obviously, but when he talks to the Panda King, he says he's nothing but a homicidal pyromaniac, which is also pretty burn. All right, so I don't have a lucky charm here. You see these rings? <laughs> yeah, those rings. Uh, they can bounce back after I skip through them, and. If they hit me, I'm dead. <laughs> and there's nothing I can do about it. This is, I don't know if it's like a developer oversight. I, I don't know. It happens sometimes. It hasn't happened yet, but it can happen. It won't happen this time. I hope not. I mean, if nothing, if it does happen, like, I'm still good on time, I think. So it's, it would be nice to, like, show it, I guess. But it, it, don't, it doesn't look like it'll happen. It never happens in the final phase. I've never had it happen, at least. So we should be fine. There we go. So we have some platforming here. And then the run is over. 
only chance now. Got to get to his head. Ah, yeah. Alright, so there's a jump I can do here. I'm not gonna do it because I don't have a lucky charm. But I can jump and grab that pipe over there, and it's kind of difficult without a charm. I'll, I'll just need to show you that you can do it. So I'm gonna do the platforming here. The platforming is about 30 sec uh, 20 seconds slower. But you get to see more the level. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Please don't. I have to do depth perception now. Feet <laughs> together. Feet together. Alright, so time is coming up very, very shortly. Three, two, one, and time. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I've beaten them all one by one and reclaimed my birthright. Of course, a few hiccups there was there, no but way I could have gotten here without right with the this. help of my pals. I know this hasn't been easy for them, but they stuck with me through it all. <laughs> Murray, boy, it took a lot of guts for him to get out in the field with me. I know he was scared, but he's got more heart than anyone I've ever known. This cutscene is pretty cool. Thank goodness for Bentley. Without his expertise, I'd have never found my way off that rooftop in Paris. A guy couldn't ask for a better gang of friends. Uh, who could ever forget the lovely Carmelita? Looks like we're not going to be friends anymore. <laughs> now that Clockwork's oh, death ray is out of commission, we're back to playing cops and robbers. I thought for sure she was going to slap the handcuffs on me right then and there. But instead, she was true to her word and gave me that 10-second head start. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Go to look. <laughs> One. Ooh. <laughs> what a smart guy. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> it was a ruse. It was I all a ruse. Leaving stranded on that giant rock. But I knew it wouldn't be long before we see each other again. All right. <laughs> All right. So um, I believe the donation incentive for your showcase was met. So when these are. Uh, these, these credits I run out, I'm gonna spend a good five to seven minutes or something showing off some pretty cool things we can do in the game. So, yeah, I mean, I guess we don't actually have to watch the credits. I can skip those by doing this again. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> the credits aren't too interesting, anyway. So. Except for Hot Dog Guy. Oh, yeah, that's a Hot Dog. Ah, oh, damn, we missed Hot Dog Guy. Uh, I thought I'd go show him, that's already showing credits. Damn, <laughs> forgot about Hot Dog Guy. There's a guy in a hot dog suit <laughs> in the credits. All right. So, could I get like, um, like what was the final time? Your final time was one hour, one minute, and four seconds. That's really good. That's really good. Alright, so the, f the first uh, glitch I'm going to show off is a little bit interesting. I have to let this play out a little bit before I can do it. So I do this without actually loading the save file, which is pretty cool. A lot of the glitches that are going to be coming up uh, require a power-up. Or one of them do anyway. Alright, so have you ever stood on like a title screen and just wondered, you know what, I want to move around. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, you can do this. It's pretty cool. And I, of course, just waited a little bit, so now I have to wait for the camera to turn around. But I can, uh, I can start a cutscene here, and it's going to be pretty fun. I need to wait because I can't navigate to the cutscene here. This music is very calming. Yes, Lar. Oops. Oh no. <laughs> Don't want to do another round. There we go. 
<laughs> yeah, I think I'm seeing things too. <laughs> and Bentley's just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Stop bothering me. <laughs> I don't need this right now. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, it doesn't know what to do. I'm not supposed to do this. So Bentley's line is never triggered because I'm not in a safe file, I guess. I don't know. Oh, yeah, we're in a Binocchi cam in the, t in the title screen at the same time. That's pretty cool. All right, so... Yeah, I'm gonna, a lot of these um, tricks that I'm gonna be showing off uh, take advantage of the super jump mechanic that we use to go into the two first bosses. This one is a little bit tricky, so I hope I won't like mess it up. It has a little bit of setup time, but it's worth it if I don't uh, screw it up. I have to kill this god first. Also, I might as well go invisible. I need to jump in that water over there, so I need that water to not be guarded by the god. I had something really, really cool happen uh, when I tried to do this, like yesterday night. And I really hope it's going to happen again, because it's awesome. But if it doesn't, then it's still pretty cool. So I'm going to go to this tip here, slightly to the right of the tip. Like that. I'm going to do a long uh, chain of super jumps. Oh man, we hit a tree. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> well, I can leave. Okay, I I'll try one more time, I guess. Uh, I can leave the level, and it looks like I'm flying through space when it happens, and it's really awesome. You got this. Yeah, let's do it. All right, that should do it. If I don't get it this time, I'll just move on, um, I guess. But it's pretty cool. I'm, I'd be a bit sad if I don't get it now. That's not a big deal. Man. Oh, well, I guess we entered, we entered this level, I guess. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> That's one way to do it. <laughs> oh, well. Oh. All right. Um, every, single le well, every single platformer in this run has a, uh, a Master Thief Sprint, it's called, which is um, like a time trial, I guess. And the time trials have some pretty cool strats. This is a level that we don't see in any percent. This is called Straight to the Top. And it's a really, really awesome way and a cool way to like beat this really fast in the sprint. You do need a lucky charm though, and when you start the, the actual sprint, you lose like your charm. But if you have 99 coins, you're fine. So you just get it. But to do this, I just beat the level. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather I trigger the end of the level. I just have to go to this alt now. There you go. So that's cool. Um, another thing is this game has this thing where no matter how far away I am from a thing, it will put me back. And I can abuse that by grabbing a hook at the same time, which will uh, it will put me back on the hook, but I have to go through a rock, and the game doesn't like that. And <laughs> I guess you'll, you'll, you'll see what's going to happen here. Slice, uh, slice gonna be a little bit of a pickle here. Wait, I have fast. I need to use fast. I might as well speed this up a little bit. All right. So if I grab this hook and chain these jumps again, something a little bit interesting can happen. And hopefully I can get a good shot of it with the camera.
Where are you? <laughs> Slice arm is going through oh. the back. <laughs> oh, that's his arm. Yeah, it's pretty stretched right now. Is this arms for Nintendo Switch? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it, it gets better. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. He's stuck inside the rock right now. <laughs> <laughs> If I jump, he'll just go back, but I've got a good arm stretch there, <laughs> getting ready for <laughs> various Nintendo Switch games. All right, so the, for, for the final act here, you all remember that level where we were Carmelita shooting down the fire slugs for Sly? We can do this on foot. Just need to dive power up here. There we go. <laughs> so smashing dive going in here skips the trigger for the cutscene, and Kamlita is really angry about that. <laughs> <laughs> She's not too excited. Yeah, poor Kamlita. Yeah, we can, we can actually beat the level, because we're technically in a cutscene right now, so like the, the trigger for beating the level isn't there, but we can get to the end. That jump is really hard, I got it, nice. And yeah, so like all the events of this level, like none of it sp has spawned. Like there are no fire slugs, there's no nothing, but you can still explore it on foot. And all you need to do is smash the triangle button going in. And you can break these yourself. Don't need come leader. You can also like just go around them, so Sly is just being the picky, I guess. Like, I guess Sly can't really break it because he doesn't have his cane at this point, but yeah. And here's where the end of the level would be. And we can roll around out of bounds. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, anyway, I think that was all for me. I hope you guys enjoyed the, the glitches and the run, and thank you for having me. Big shout outs to uh, the PlayStation speedrunning community. I hope you'll stick around for the entire block. And uh, yeah, enjoy, enjoy the marathon, everyone. Woo! That was an excellent run of Sly Cooper from THNCS, and we do have a couple donations, and then we'll have an interview with some of the runners of Kirby Superstar. We have a $300 donation from Worthy D35. I lost my father-in-law this past year to cancer and wanted to donate in his memory. I never knew about the animals when I played Super Metroid as a kid, so I have no guilt in letting them blow up the planet. Kill the animals. We have a $25 donation from Rachel Simpson. I'm super pumped for this PlayStation block, especially this amazing fly run. My middle school sweetheart, now husband, got me this game so long ago. It's very dear to my heart. 13 years later, we're watching our first AGDQ at work and at home, so productivity has been halted slightly. Kudos to all of the runners, announcers, and staff for this great week of gaming, all for a good cause. And now I believe we're ready for an interview with two of the runners from Kirby Superstar.